Hey folks, this is Vince with Dan's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Infraspace. It's important to stress that what you're looking at here is a pre-early access build. The game is planned to go out on Steam's early access program October 15th, 2021, about a day from now. It goes without saying that everything that you're about to see is most definitely subject to change. So I've played the demo for quite a bit, and now I've had a chance to play the early access or the pre-early access version. And I'm very impressed with it. Um, this is akin to games like Dyson Sphere Program, Factorio, Anno, in the sense that you're going to be building up this city. The main emphasis, however, is going to be transportation and resource chaining. So the game starts you off in the menu, like most games do. Although, there are some that don't. Just gotta point that out. Some throw you right into it without giving you a chance to do anything. Luckily, this game doesn't do that. Um, so you can choose your difficulty. There's like easy, medium, hard, and then there's transportation difficulty, easy, medium, and hard. Um, there's no further refinement from that, and there's no way to, I guess, make your own map. Like there's no map randomizer. There's no, there's no way to customize, okay, I want it to look this way or that way. It just throws you into the game with the difficulty settings that you've chosen. So in the future, I would really like to see um, a way to customize the map, make it look different, uh, choose how I want the map to look, maybe even a map editor. But anyway, so once you're in the game, you're going to be doing very much what you would do in, say, an Anno game in the sense that you're going to be building very basic stuff first and, like, regular basic housing. And your astronauts, your level one people will move in, okay? And all they need is oxygen and food. That's it. That's all they need. So you plop down the buildings that you need. You provide those uh, particular buildings power, like a wind turbine, for example. You connect the power lines and bam, you're good. Um, you're producing food. You're producing oxygen. You can see the cars and the trucks zooming along the roads there. Each car has their own path and destination, so it becomes very important later on to create a road or infrastructure that um, will be beneficial to your traffic pattern so you don't get like these jams. But anyway, um, so you've got all your basic needs met and your people are happy and like, yay, great. Um, and then you can see in the bottom left, you've got, okay, I've got this much population, um, like say 25 population. I have 20 jobs out of the 25 filled up. Um, housing, um, I've got enough housing to accompany everyone. So if you ever find that you have more buildings than people, just plop down more housing. They'll move in via your spaceport and they'll fill all your jobs for you. Um, so yeah, you're at the stage where, yeah, you're, you're doing great. You've got this, this regular habitat. It's just low level oxygen food. That's all it needs. Okay. Now at some point you're going to need to upgrade those habitats and increase them to the next level. Why? Because your tech tree is sort of divided into, I guess, columns or segments, and you can only advance to the next segment if you manage to get a certain size town of certain level citizens. So again, your basic citizens are like level one, and you've got so many of those. Once you fulfill the needs of your level one citizens, your habitats upgrade to level two. And then once you've satisfied those needs at level two, you move on to level three. Again, very akin to the Anno series where you start off with very low level citizens and then they start demanding more and more and more as you level them up. And when you do that in this game, your tech tree will start unlocking for the rest of it. Like, again, you, you've got these segments. So now that I've got level two citizens, I can now access this next column of tech. Okay. And then once you're, you know, once you're ready to move on to the next one, you fulfilled all the needs of level two, you move on to level three. And then again, the next column unlocks and so on. That is really cool. Um, so... That's the general gameplay flow, is put buildings down, put roads down, connect everything, research new stuff, um, production change, you do have to worry about that. There are factories in this game, for example, that demand two of a different resource, so um, you need to make sure that both of the, in, you know, both of the raw production buildings are close enough to the factories to really make a difference. I mean, you can separate them farther out, but your trucks have to travel pretty far to get there. So you're going to be doing a lot of like, okay, good A and good B need to be near this and good C and D need to be near this. And, you know, it's, it's, again, it's all about the infrastructure and how you plan to make everything work together well. Um, I will praise the game for how easy it is to get into. Um, it's more of a casual take 
of the Anno games and space, uh, that Dyson Sphere project and Factorio, this is more of a, a very uh, laid back and more casual look at it, I think. Um, there's other games, Factorio, Dyson Sphere project or program, they are typically a bit more involved. Um, it, make your, it makes my brain hurt. This one does not. This is a lot more casual. Um, I have not gotten to level five or six citizens yet, so maybe at that point it might start making my brain hurt, but I'm having a good time with it. Um, the roads are very easy to put down. You can move or delete buildings at will. That's a great thing. Um, the build menu is very easy to access, and you can clearly see what you have to unlock it and what you you know still need to unlock. Time controls, uh, pause, play, and fast forward. You can easily see how much power you have, although I would switch the numbers around. Um, like the maximum that you need, I think, is the first number, and what you're producing is the second number. I want to see that reversed. I like seeing what I'm producing out of what I need or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there's concrete, steel, and other various productions that you can create, and that will all tie into the construction of your city. Um, all in all, this is a really cool game. Um, again, I haven't delved into the later ends of it yet, but I would say this is a good stepping stone for other games. Like if you find Factorio too challenging or Dyson Sphere Project or Program too challenging, um, you may want to check this one out instead. Um, the graphics are not as intensive. It's a bit more cartoony, which is fine with me. Um, there's an easy production, um, screen that you can access. It's like a little button on the left. And you can easily say, okay, this is how much I'm producing and this is how much I need. So you can clearly see at a glance what you've got. You can even assign workers via a slider to these. So if you don't have enough workers, you can sort of, I want this one at, I want this one producing concrete at 75%. I want carbon producing at 75 or 50 percent whatever you can you can do what you want with there but i'm just saying like everything is very easy to access and maintain um so yeah i i do recommend this one i think it's a great first step um the science in this game is also really cool again it's fairly simple in the beginning um it takes a chapter from factorio's uh, science pack system in the sense that um, in, this, in the beginning you create blue science packs, but then you need to create green science packs and then yellow science packs and then red science packs. And that's so that you can start researching the more advanced technologies. And as you would imagine, the green or the blue science packs are very easy to produce, but the red, which is the toughest, that's going to need a lot of resources to make. And again, that's further into the game. So it takes a chapter from the whole Factorio science system. If you like the idea of any of that, then I suggest checking this one out. Um, if, if you're more hardcore and you're, and you're looking for something like, you know, Factorio time, no, you're not going to find that here. This is more casual. Um, it's still thinky, though. I mean, again, this is infrastructure and resource chaining uh, heavy. So you want to make sure that you're building buildings in the right area, making sure that, you know, they have easy access to each other, making sure that you've got no, um, you know, traffic jams or anything like that. Um, you will be able to build various roads later on, like in, say, City Skylines. The, the more you play, the more you unlock. So, you know, you start with just this basic gravel road for now, but then you gain the ability to build, like, these highway-looking things. Um, you know, they're like double roads or triple roads, that kind of thing. And you could also, like, if you wanted to, build roundabouts. The, there's, like, a road shaper tool, build curved road as opposed to straight roads, so you can build curved roads in this game and make your own roundabouts to offset traffic a bit. It's completely up to you. So yes, check this one out. Even though this is pre-early access and it's uh, coming out tomorrow into early access, I, I still think it's worth checking out and uh, possibly getting into if you like this kind of game. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.